now let us see what is an ammeter. It is a device used to measure current and is always connected in series with the element through which current is to be measured. The reading of an ammeter is always lesser than actual current in the circuit. Smaller the resistance of an ammeter, more accurate will be its reading. An ammeter is said to be ideal if its resistance R is zero. Next, conversion of a galvanometer into ammeter. So, all of you know basically an ammeter and voltmeter are the converted forms of the galvanometer only. And how to convert a galvanometer into ammeter? So, here a galvanometer may be converted into an ammeter by connecting a low resistance which is also called as shunt in parallel to the galvanometer G as shown in the diagram. So this is the diagram. Uh, this is your usual galvanometer and if you connect a small resistance parallel to it, then it gets converted into an ammeter or you can use the galvanometer to read the current. Now here, when you connect this small shunt in parallel with the galvanometer, then uh, the equivalent resistance of the combination will become Gs upon G plus S. Now here, as G and S are parallel to each other, both of them are going to have equal potential difference and therefore the current through galvanometer into galvanometer resistance is equal to I minus IG into S. This gives us the required shunt value which comes out to be IG upon I minus IG into capital G. Now to pass the nth part of main current that is IG is equal to I upon N through the galvanometer, the required shunt can be calculated by remembering this very small formula that is capital S is equal to G upon N minus 1. Now both these expressions will be very helpful to you to solve the problems based on galvanometer and ammeter. So just note them down somewhere so that you will be able to solve them. Now going to the voltmeter. The voltmeter is a device used to measure the potential difference and is always put in parallel with the circuit element across which potential difference is to be measured. So here you can see how a voltmeter is connected. Now this is the battery and this is the voltmeter. So here the voltmeter is always connected across the circuit or here it is shown to be connected across the resistance. Now the reading of a voltmeter is always lesser than the true value. Greater the resistance of voltmeter, more accurate will be its reading. A voltmeter is said to be ideal if its resistance is infinite, that, that is, it draws no current from the circuit element for its operation. So remember this fact so that uh, if some conceptual question arises, then you must be able to answer what is an ideal voltmeter and what is an ideal ammeter. Now how to convert a galvanometer into voltmeter? So as said earlier, a galvanometer may be converted into a voltmeter by connecting a large resistance capital R in series with the galvanometer as shown in the diagram. Now here the current flowing through galvanometer as well as the external resistor R will be same but it will produce different potential drop across it and therefore Vg is equal to Ig into G and here it will be V minus Vg. Now here the equivalent resistance of the combination will become G plus R and according to the Ohm's law capital V is equal to Ig into G plus R which gives us the required series resistance value as capital R equal to V upon IG minus G or it is V upon VG minus 1 into capital G. Now 
if a net part of applied voltage appears across the galvanometer then vg can be written as capital v upon n and required series resistance capital r is equal to n minus 1 times g so remember these two formula regarding voltmeter and the previous one for the ammeter next uh, you have studied wheatstone's bridge so just have a quick look at the wheatstone's bridge a wheatstone bridge is an arrangement of four resistances which can be used to measure one of them in terms of the rest so if you are given any unknown resistance and three resistances which are known then you can find the unknown resistance by putting the balancing condition of wheatstone's bridge now here uh, the arms ab and bd are called as the uh, ab and bc are called as the ratio arms and arms ac and bd are called as the conjugate arms now what is the balanced bridge let us see the bridge is said to be balanced when deflection in galvanometer is zero that is no current flows through the galvanometer or in other words the potential at point b is equal to potential at point d now in this balance condition what can you write p upon q equal to r upon s on mutually changing the position of cell and galvanometer this condition will not change so i hope you remember uh, the experiments which you have performed with the help of a wheatstone's bridge there you are always asked to take the uh, left gap readings and right gap readings and then you take the mean of it and uh, actually we are uh, trying to avoid the contact resistances or any errors which are uh, introduced in the reading due to the contact resistances so here uh, it is recommended that you should take the readings uh, by changing the position of the unknown resistances now what is an unbalanced bridge if the bridge is not balanced the current will flow from d to b if vd is greater than vb that is VA minus VD is less than VA minus VB, and this gives us P into S greater than R into Q. Now, what are applications of Wheatstone's bridge? It is meter bridge, post office box, Carey Foster bridge are instruments based on the principle of Wheatstone bridge, and they are used to measure unknown resistance. now the meter bridge uh, as you have used it in the laboratory in case of meter bridge the length of wire ac is taken to be 1 meter long varying the position of tapping point b bridge is balanced if in balanced position of bridge ab this length is equal to l then bc the remaining length comes out to be 100 minus l and you can write one condition that is q upon p is equal to 100 minus l upon l but we know that p upon q is equal to r upon s and therefore s comes out to be 100 minus l upon l into r now after the wheatstone's meter bridge you have also studied about the potentiometer now what is a potentiometer it is a device which is used to measure the emf of a given cell and to compare the emfs of cells it is also used to measure the internal resistance of a given cell now all of you know that the potentiometer consists of a very long resistive wire which can be about 6 to 10 meter long it is made up of manganese or constantan and a battery of known voltage e and internal resistance r called supplier battery or the driver cell now connection of these two forms primary circuit so here is the circuit now one terminal of another cell whose emf is to be measured is connected at one end of the main circuit and the other terminal at any point on the resistive wire through a galvanometer g this forms the secondary circuit 
Now other details are as follows. So uh, you have used all these things and uh, might be by now you must have completed the experiments related with potentiometer. So the diagram must be in your in front of your eyes. So here uh, this is the primary circuit and this one is the secondary circuit. Uh, e is the source uh, battery and capital E is the uh, cell whose EMF is to be determined or whose internal resistance is to be determined with the help of all other components. So you have jockey, key, resistance of potentiometer wire termed as capital R, rho as the specific resistance of potentiometer wire and RH is the variable resistance which controls the current through the wire AB. Now the specific resistance of potentiometer wire must be high but its temperature coefficient of resistance alpha must be low. Now remember this condition whenever you are using any wire as a potentiometer wire that its specific resistance should be high but temperature coefficient should be low. Now all higher potential points that is terminals of primary and secondary circuits must be connected together at point A and all lower potential points must be connected to point B or the jockey. The value of known potential difference must be greater than the value of the uh, unknown potential difference to be measured. The potential gradient must remain constant and for this the current in the primary circuit must remain constant and that is why it is advised to not to slide the jockey but you should tap it uh, on the wire. Now the diameter of potentiometer wire must be uniform everywhere and all these uh, precautions which are taken will actually uh, introduce least errors while you are taking the measurements. Now this is uh, one chapter which you are actually performing as experiments also so you can visualize what is happening and therefore very easy to remember also. Now what do you mean by potential gradient? It is termed or denoted as X and it is defined as the potential difference or fall in potential per unit length of wire and denoted by X equal to V upon L. Now all of you know that V is equal to I into R and you can write it as E upon R plus RH plus R into R and therefore X is equal to V upon L which is equal to I R upon L or it is I rho upon A or it is E upon R plus RH plus R into R upon L. Now potential gradient directly depends on following factors. The resistance per unit length that is R upon L of potentiometer wire. Second, the EMF of battery in the primary circuit that is E. The specific resistance of the material of potentiometer wire that is rho and the current flowing through potentiometer wire I. Now potential gradient indirectly depends upon following factors. The radius of potentiometer wire so indirectly on area of cross section and the resistance of rheostat in the primary circuit. So remember these uh, points also so that you will be able to answer or arise the problem answer to the problems correctly. Now the working. Suppose a jockey is made to touch a point Z on wire, then potential difference between points A and Z will be V is equal to X into L. Now at this length L, two potential difference are obtained. First V due to battery E and second E due to the unknown cell and that is why if V is greater than E, the current will flow in galvanometer circuit in one direction and if V is less than E then current will flow in galvanometer circuit in opposite direction. 